Hello, everybody. We are here on uh, Motivation Monday. Let's get some motivation going, huh? Well, we've got kind of an interesting topic, I think, today with uh, with our E3 group, which is our expert epic entrepreneur coaches. And we've got today with us Cheryl Bassett. Hey, Cheryl, how you doing? Hey there. Good. Yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl is our uh, 50s generation and I'm the 60s generation. We've got one of our generations that's ill today. So Yasmin, shout out to you and hope you get the feeling better. She's our 40s generation. And then we've got uh, Coach Jay, Jennifer Santoro uh, in the 30s. Jen, how you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. Super. And Stephanie, Miss 20s generation. Ah, you got your happiness mug going? I do. It says says hello possibilities hello gratitude so mom hey, sent it to me i like yeah. it well you know our, our topic today is is kind of based on an article that i was reading and i thought it was interesting because i don't know about you all but i've always heard you know like even with mike dooley's work well actually since i was about 19 years old and got introduced to some work about that our thoughts really create things, you know, that we really can envision and change what happens in our, in our lives and in, in terms of how we visualize. And everything. But there seems today to be a lot of scientific proof moving towards that, that shows how do this, how the synapses actually, you know, connect to one another and create a shorter pathway to either, well, happiness or uh, the complaining, it appears, can create, you know, just the opposite. I don't know, what's, that, what's y'all's take on that after reading the article and, and kind of looking at that scientific component where in the past this has been kind of like, you know what I'm saying, woo-woo, you know, and if you tried to take it into corporations, you would look at as a woo-woo person, um, which, you know, let's just say that didn't always equal uh, a way to get into corporate. But I think things are changing there and, and people are really beginning to look at at this scientifically based component of you know how we are and who we are yeah, everybody just chime in when you got something to say here so a couple things that struck me about it and i don't know if it would be the exact same but it's exactly. certainly it would be similar is um you know it's no different than when you learn to play the piano when you first start trying to make your hands do what you want them to do um takes time but once you learn it you can literally almost do it without even thinking about it right because it because it becomes something that you can just naturally do with you know because it that connection's been made and I'm, I'm wondering if this isn't that dramatically different from that in terms of how we sort of see the world or the, our thoughts and how it starts to become a habit that we create and becomes a natural process for us so that was the first thought I had when I read it so to me it doesn't seem like it's a stretch at all if you think about it from that perspective um, and Dottie, you know this from somebody who shoots the basketball, right? It's just, I mean, once you start to get in a groove with shooting it, it's like you could close your eyes and still do it to a degree, right? Because you visualized it and it becomes a part of who you are. So that was the first thing. And I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it seems like it could be sort certainly correlated over to that and that makes sense for people. But then the other piece of it was then, it, you know, reading it, I just thought, man, so that totally brings home the vax in terms of what yeah. we're saying to her day in and day out and how we're putting that <clears throat> that in um because there's a book called hung by the tongue and mm -hmm. our words either you know make us great or they hang us <laughs> and we don't even realize it but <clears throat> but it's a it's a book i read a long long time ago and it's just about how we don't think about our words and how powerful they are but you know you know if we always say geez i'm tired all the time well guess what happens you end up being tired all the time because you're putting it out there so it's i think it's sort of similar along those lines so i, I was very fascinated by the article because it sort of to me rung true from some of the things that we've been talking about throughout the whole five weeks one is we, I, uh, I, go ahead as, as we tie it back into entrepreneurship too you know either it empowers us in ways or you know it, um, our, power in, in terms of what we're doing uh, in, in our entrepreneur endeavor. And we talked about along the way during our uh, Get Biz Lean that we just completed, you know, our 30 day challenge and, and um, you know, our bonus week, Great Week with Jen, uh, is really about becoming unconsciously competent, you know, where we move it into that arena 
and it takes all these phases. But Jen, what's your take on all this? Um, well, what I was going to add is, you know, I, I completely agree with Cheryl's take on that. I think that's a perfect way to describe what I feel like the article is all about is something to make it more tangible. You know, I think it's great to associate it with something of um, physical practice. So for me, it was um, I was thinking about dance um, in my dance training. There will be like these moments of like where you see this dance move and the, the choreographer explains something. And at first it's very foreign and it's just like, you're not getting it. You're not getting it, but you just keep working on it and keep working on it. And then all of a sudden it's like magic one day. And we used to say it was, it was interesting that we would put it in this terms, but we'd just say like all of a sudden it's the move is then all of a sudden in the body. And we'd actually term it that way. It was, it felt cause it feels the feeling is that it just becomes part of you. It becomes inside the body. Like it's no longer you mentally trying to think about what you're doing. It's just this natural state of where you're just naturally able to do whatever it is that you've been practicing to do. And what I liked about the article is that, you know, I love that now um, there's so much effort being put towards studying the human brain mm -hmm. to explain these phenomena that happen. So we've been observing behavior for, you know, I mean, since the beginning of time. And there's a correlation, you know, clearly between um, those who focus on, for example, positive aspects and focus on gratitude. And, you know, and, and you know, for how long has, have there been people who have been preaching give thanks and practice gratitude. And, and now we're able to see how though the people who practice that, how it actually changes the brain mm -hmm. and, and being able to see neurologically the different connections that are happening within the brain when we do these simple practices, but consistently. But I think that like the main point of the article that I liked is that like, you know, is it's bringing up the point of that these things in order for these pathways to be created, there's an uncomfortable period because we have to continuously practice it. But the good news is, is that all of a sudden there does come a day where it does become natural. And I can attest to that where in, in um, focusing on positive thinking, instead of it being so much about Pollyanna thinking, um, more, more in line with focusing on, okay, well, what am I learning? What is the movement forward? And associating that with positive thinking um, that is, I mean, that's been a huge game changer in my life. And now it's more nat, it's just natural. Like when something happens, I don't go into, um, focusing on what didn't work so much as it is. It goes naturally now into, okay, what was working, but like, how do I improve this? And then it's like the stress is relieved and the, the big, the big part that wrong true to me in the article was where it talked about stress killing it. it it does. It stress literally kills our body, <laughs> and um, now we're a they're able to see the neurological pathways of like what's actually happening, what that's communicating with our body, and how stress is actually working against us. So if we can actively, mentally focus on, you know, um, how to have a healthy state of what would we would term a healthy state of mind, um, it we then actually do become limitless, and and that I think is what all entrepreneurs want. So I'm going to stop for a second. Stephanie, I really wanted to hear your thoughts um, yeah. on the article as well. So the whole time I was reading this article, um, you know, I have this tendency to kind of connect things to, I don't know what it is, but everything tends to come together at once in my life. And so all of a sudden, all at once, I'll have a whole bunch of people talking to me about the same concept. And um, I did this mastermind. I told you guys about it. I had a mastermind. And I was having them participate in this to give them some background. And we had our three day weekend last month. And one of the ladies I had come in, uh, she's a very dear friend of mine. And I have to be careful what I say, because she's getting a lot of patents on all this stuff she's talking about. But she's literally everything we're talking about right talking here. About right she is getting the science behind it, like researching the science. So one of the things she talked about and I think it's fairly well known, um, but with the first time something happens in your brain, the synapses fire together. And then the more often it happens like that, the more often it fires together. And in order to change that, like what you were talking about, Jen, you have to, it's kind of like when you're walking a path in the grass 
and you get a path in the grass, right? Like our dog, he goes outside and you can tell exactly where he goes every time because there's this little path that goes around the side of the house every single time. And she's like, it's kind of like that. Humans, our brains work like that. So we've got the first time we had something happen, you know, someone said, oh, you're never going to be that smart. Oh, well, you're just stupid. Oh, well, li- that's just life. Life just sucks. Just get over it. Life's not all peaches. You know, anytime when someone says something like that, your synapses fire together. And so every time something similar happens, that fire gets stronger. It's like it throws another rope and it gets stronger and stronger. And so to Jen's point, when you say, I'm going to change this, you have to start wearing a new path through the grass. And it's not easy because we as humans, we take the path of least resistance. This is the one we've been used to. And now we have to go here. This is really hard for our brains to wrap themselves around until we start throwing. So we go through the first time and then we start throwing the rope and we build a stronger and a stronger and a stronger and a stronger path. So really reading this whole thing, it just kind of brought back Sunita's commentary. And she's been great because every time she comes to hear me talk, she walks up and goes, you have no idea why what you're saying is scientifically sound, but it is. And I'm proving it. (laughs) I'm like, I just know it works. (laughs) She was like, yeah, but I know why it works. (laughs) So you're right, Dottie. Like it was all woo woo. And it's, it's not, this is actual science at this point, why it happens like this. And Napoleon Hill was way ahead of his time. I've been reading his two books, Think and Grow Rich and Outwitting the Devil. And oh, yeah, right. he's, just, he's just genius. He talks about it. It's entire everything. You What you focus on expands. You're like that, yeah, Stephanie. That is awesome. <laughs> I'm well, loving it. I just read it. We've all read it now. So that's a... <laughs> I was amazed. Um, I, 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 every time I listen to it, like it freaks me out. I'm like, how did this guy... Like, this is genius. This is unbelievable. Um, And that's all he talks about was how what you focus on expands. And I talked about it in my book, too, that the people you spend your time with, right, they get you complaining and the more complaining. And complaining is that, that kind of first rope in my mind. You complain, you throw the rope. And then every time you hear a complaint, it becomes stronger. And so... Now, it's not just that, you know, that's just life. Life happens like that. Oh, well, everything happens like that. That's all of life. And so, oh, well, you know, I'm not feeling well. Well, life sucks, so it must be a tumor. Oh, I'm, you know, oh, this is, so I think we create our own sicknesses. We create our own problems. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the complaining, with looking at life, you know, the glass half empty. And our complaining becomes our disease, our dis-ease. Yeah. And, and it's a circular thing that happens over and over again. I just think it's such an exciting time, you know, uh, with Napoleon Hill. I mean, Neville is the work that I was introduced to back when I was 19. And Neville's work impacted Napoleon Hill. I mean, it's all these threads that go together, which, which are absolutely amazing. And when I was first introduced to Neville's work, um. It, it, it sort of scared me, <laughs> to be quite honest, because there was this moment when I realized I was never, ever going to be able to blame anything on anybody again. You know, I mean, and and that's the kind of a, as, as, as freeing as it is it, and exhilarating, it, I don't even know how to explain how I felt at the age of 19, you know, I was like, Oh my goodness, you know, so every time I would I always come back to that and knowing that, and this is where I begin to really tap into that visualization of the end result without being attached to the how. And, you know, I've used that over and over and over again. And people say, well, how do you know that works? And I say, well, I can only share my experiences. And my experiences, are this, this, and this, and, you know, at the age of 62, I've got quite a few of them. Um, you know, everything from taking a year long journey when there was really nothing budgeted for being able to take a year long journey in 2005 and six around the United States in a 13 foot trailer, you know, um, but that belief that it truly was possible and that total commitment and the total focus 
And I think what happens when people begin to experience that for the first time, then they have that synapse, that connection that happens. And when, I think all of us, when we actually realize, wow, if I think in this way, it really can create something and we have an experience of that creation happening, then it confirms the legitimacy of that and reality of that happening and we're willing to do it again. And so when people start seeing that there's really some scientific proof, then some people who maybe thought, well, that's a bunch of bunk, you know, they're, they're more willing to, well, let me just go there. Let me see, let me apply this. And then the application of it creates the validity of it because of the synapses and all. So that's just been my experience. And, um, and I firmly know that when I've not been able to really, you know, tag it that way to, you know, to anchor it in that manner. Um, I've always known when, when I'm not doing that and, and the results of that, and they're not pretty, <laughs> you know, I mean, and so th that's where that responsibility and not playing the victim and all those kind of things come into play because really I go, wow, this really is my life to create. And it doesn't mean ever that things don't happen in life. Of course they happen, but it goes back to what is my opportunity to respond rather than have a reaction. And it's a very, very small gap there, you know, but, but it's like, to me, that becomes managing the gap in life between response and reaction. And so that's how I go back and, and apply it even to entrepreneurship because we're, we are faced with that, not just on a daily basis, but oftentimes on a minute by minute basis. I mean, what do y'all think in your entrepreneurship endeavors? I mean, cause that's really kind of where we're tying it back into, although it applies to, I think, anything in life. So, you know, I, I just, I'm listening and I'm thinking so much of our childhood, right? Programs, a lot of that. And I think sometimes stepping back from that is, is scary for people because People will stay in something that's um, familiar and uncomfortable rather than moving to something that they know would be more comfortable but is unfamiliar because they like to stay in that space that's a comfort zone for them. And so I think that sometimes it's hard for people to realize sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Too. When you get around other people, I don't know that I did for a long time until I got around, quite frankly, a lot of women who I started just to see these really amazing women, you know, because I didn't have that in my life in terms of a role model. So I didn't know what I didn't know till later. So I think that's part of it is that awareness that has to creep in. Um, but I do do think it, it, that if we're willing to take a step back and look at all that, we can see how those things actually can serve us. Um, the awareness of learning about them in our businesses and in our lives uh, versus allowing them to hold us back or to just stay because we don't want the change or the fear of the change to happen. So I, I think it's totally about that. But it's also, um, so I know with my kids, you know, and of course that's my big focus, but I tried to do, and I'm sure there's things that I look back now and I think, well, I would have done that differently. But I know that, uh, and I, this is a really tiny example, but just the, the thought process of when Brian would come home from school and he'd say, hey, you know, I'd say, how was your test? I wouldn't say, how many did you get wrong? I'd say, he's, you know, if, he's, if he says I didn't do as well, I'm like, he'd say, well, I got so many wrong. I'm like, I don't care how many you got wrong. How many did you get right? And it's just a different way of thinking about it. Well, yeah, you got three wrong, but yeah, it sounds like you got 18 or 20 of them right. So, you know, we wouldn't want to flip those, right? So let's be appreciative of it and, and happy about what it is that we accomplished. And I think sometimes just looking at it, and that for me was a big deal because growing up, everything I did was sort of second guessed, right? Like you should have done it this way or you could have done it that way or why didn't you do this? And so I grew up kind of using that with everything. I didn't have a lot of confidence around my decisions. So I just think it's willing to take that step back and go through the the, the, the changes in that awareness is really important in terms of how it impacts what we decide to do moving forward. So what like about uh, personal experiences that you've had? Go ahead, Stephanie. Oh, I was going to say, so, um, com you know, kind of playing on that, I just finished a book by Seth Godin called The Dip, and it's about when to quit and when to stick. And he talks about how the system is designed to make us fail. Like the system is set up to get us to fail because 
Otherwise, there's no point in being the superstar. There's the ones that get paid better. So the system's designed to make us quit. The system's designed, right? They don't write how many you got right at the top of the page. They write how many you got wrong at the top of the page. So we're constantly surrounded by this, oh, you know, life sucks. Oh, that's not, you know, oh, like it's, it's a fight. I think that's a really good point that it's everywhere, literally everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I, oh, go ahead, Cheryl. What was that point that you wanted? Go ahead. Um, so what I wanted to add in, um, and I, I think that this this has to do with exactly everything that was just being said, including yeah. that you were saying right before, and that is the self discovery of that we are our own authority. And so there's this space where we go from childhood into young adulthood and that entire process in our development is all about learning autonomy and learning about who we are as individuals and and really the the strongest lesson that i think is is probably one of the most difficult ones is that we are our own authority there is no authority to tell us what to do that that's actually an illusion you know and that you know in in some regards like you know there there are certain places where we need that when we're children right we need we need a parent to say no 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 you cannot have ice cream for dinner every night because you will end up extremely sick you know i mean like that is that's a very real thing however though when it comes to life decisions and when it comes to um how we live our lives at the end of the day, it's us that are the ones that are the authority. Nobody else is. And I think what ends up happening for a lot of people is um, they don't they don't get the curtain like to see behind the curtain, and they go on life believing that there's this other that there's these other authorities telling them what to do and telling them what they need to be doing. And so we end up you know living by this authority that isn't actually real. Because at the end of the day, the power is within us, how we live our lives. And and what I believe in is what I term as the internal compass, you know, and I, I think that you ladies have termed it that as well, where it's like we all have this compass inside of us that that knows the right path, that knows the path that is going to be um, supportive of our best lives and hands down how we're going to live our best lives. And, and only we can actually understand what that where that compass points to and we can look to the outside for advice and we can look to the outside to other you know people who we consider teachers to to help us and mentors to help guide us to say you know here are some options of how to do it but at the end of the day it's up to it, it, it's up to me to be able to decipher what feels right what is right for my path and being able to have the strength to go into autonomy sometimes to be like, okay, this is what is going to be right for me in this present moment on my path. And then have the respect for those around me that they need to do the same, right? That if, if you know, I have a vision and I want to go in a certain direction, but somebody I'm working with is like, you know what, Jen, that just doesn't feel right for me, that I, I then have the responsibility to honor that because it's their internal compass leading the way and I can only be responsible for my own internal compass. So that was one of the things that I wanted to add on from everything that you all were saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So I'd be interested in knowing, um, we actually, you know, have a, a large span of history in, uh, amongst us here. And yet I know from your speaking that you've already been applying this into your lives. So what are some personal experiences that you could point to where you actually applied what we're talking about that come up for you when you, anything right off the bat? I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll share one uh, of my early ones. Not that early, but what's that? I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to think of one. I'm and, I, and in particular, I'm trying to think of one that is associated with entrepreneurship because I feel like that would be helpful. So I, while you talk, Daddy, Daddy, I'm going to think. Okay. <laughs> so here's, here's what happened. Okay. I was coaching basketball in, in high school in, um, in, in, in Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And I wanted to be a college coach. And so uh, I had the chance to look at going to Georgia State as the head coach there. Uh, they wanted me to leave and 
in the middle of my high school you know, season. And I, I wasn't interested in pursuing the conversation further based on that. I was like, you know, I know I'm going to be a college coach, but I'm not going to leave in the middle of the year. So at the end of the year, though, I resigned. And people, uh, it was five years of high school teaching and coaching. And they said, well, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to coach in college. And they said, where? I said, oh, where? I don't know yet. But I know that um, that I'm going to be a college coach and I will have that job by the fall. And so I continued doing the things I, you know, I did all these uh, uh, all star camps, not just for women, but for men as well, where I didn't get to coach the boys, team, but I was with all guys. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it ended up happening as a, a gentleman named Bill Bolton, who used to be a top assistant at, at, at Florida State and different colleges, you know, he ended up introducing me to Debbie Yao, who was the head coach at the University of Kentucky. And I got that interview and ended up, you know, being hired there. Now, she ended up resigning my first day. That's a whole nother story. But, you know, I knew that I was going to be coaching in college. I knew so much that I was. I visualized it. I saw it. I saw myself walking out on the court. I began, I was really applying the things that I had been taught by Coach Roy Rodet, who was the coach at the high school where I graduated from high school and went back to. I began to really apply these things that, that I was learning through him and, and Neville's work, you know. And so I was just like, you know, it was one of these defining moments for me. And I never forgot that. I was, um, I was 27 at the time. And I just went for it. I visualized. I knew it. I, I didn't have to know the how, the where, or anything. I had to know my committedness to that end result of being a college coach. And sort of everything from then on has continued in that way. You know, so that's just an example where I can personally kind of apply that. And I don't know if you all have some personal situations that you can think back. Where did I really apply what we're talking about from that article? You know, I'm kind of thinking about, Stephanie, like how you were talking about cutting a new pathway. I really love that visual because that, oh my gosh, I'm going to take that with me moving forward because I'm like, that really helps to like ease the uncomfortableness of like when you try, when you're, when you're trying to cut a new pathway um, in life and in business. And um, the one that like really stands out to me um, is uh, finances. Because like, and then like, that's also, I feel like related to you, Stephanie, because you've done such a good job of educating people on having, you know, how to have a healthy relationship with finances. And for me, um, for the longest time, um, I was in like the, the eight to five kind of gig and I had a cap at my salary and I really wasn't making um, very much at all, even though I was putting in so much effort and work, my salary was not equated to performance. It was, I was in a situation where I was working within an organization where it just, there was no money. So um, like that was the term, there was no money. So that was the atmosphere and that was the mindset that it wasn't like you, you know, you worked for hugs per se, right? You worked to feel good. You didn't work for the financial aspect of it was like the culture I was in. And um, so I kept like budgeting back and back and back. I got rid of so many things in my life. Like I, I, I it got to a point where I had to choose between um, whether to have a cell phone or internet. And this was this was like before you know you could have internet on your phone. This was back back then. And I you know so I chose the cell phone. I didn't have internet. I would go to a coffee shop if I needed internet or just you know work like while I was at work. Like it was like I talk about it now and I'm like that is ridiculous, <laughs> right? But this was like the thought. These were the thought process. This was normal like for everybody around me and what we were doing. And so it was very uncomfortable at first to be like, how do I like? There was this part of me like my internal compass that was like, this is messed up. Like, this isn't how you need to be living. You know, you need to think about how can you bring in more income, not how do you keep sacrificing and sacrificing, to, you know, to pay the bills. So um, what I ended up having to do was, like, work towards starting to, like, go down the pathway of starting with the thought process of, 
okay, I just, I, my, my mindset going from, uh, I need to shift my mindset from cutting back in the scarcity to bringing in more income, which meant that then I did have to put in even more hours than I was doing to be able to get a second income coming in. But then what was good was that eventually over time, as I was practicing this, I was eventually able to leave like the, the eight to five gig and that that in, in the particular environment that I was in to then go into full on entrepreneurship. But that was terrifying, clearly, because, you know, a paycheck wasn't going to magically show up every two weeks, you know. So there's that, the like stepping into the, what you were, Cheryl, what you, Cheryl, what you were saying, like really stepping into the, uh, the unknown and the uncomfortableness. And, um, you know, and I mean, and then there, there was no money there for a bit. You know, I mean, it was like the up, I actually made it and then it, then it went down um because of shifts that needed to happen and pivoting that needed to happen in a company and all kinds of stuff you know and it's just the realities of the of all the things as i like to say but now it's like now it's like it's it's evening out and now it's like okay i'm now putting my energy towards multiple projects that are all going you know uh, some are revenue producing some are currently not revenue producing however though it is with the intention of it re being revenue producing Versus my old mindset was, well, I'm going to volunteer my time for this because I work to feel good versus me realizing, no, 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 there needs to be a financial um, gift in return for the hard work that's going out. So, you know, so now that's been a huge mindset for me and being able to go, cut a new pathway and for my brain to now recognize if I put energy out, I, I deserve um, income back in. So that was a very long story about how to make, how that was a process for me to cut the new path. So Jen, here's what I'm interested in. Um, you know, we often, I think it ties back into Stephanie's book, you know, about the people we hang around with. So you had to literally change because all the people you were hanging around with had the same mindset, correct? I mean, that's just, right. and, well, and it was not to make sure about people, but, you know, this is, no. uh, it just, that, well, like it was one of those things where it was tough because when you work in an, when a, in a huge organization, they have to have policies and procedures in order to make it run on a daily basis. But what ends up happening is, is that then it's like the, the freedom of the individuals who are running in the different departments lose their freedom to make ch certain choices that they would say were, the best choices for the collective whole and salary was just one of those things where that was at the top decision in the hierarchy of things to where even the people around me knew it was wrong but like they were just like we the the effort that it takes to try and now i have to get i have to hand it to a lot of the people that i worked with um they like marched for the soldiers like they went and they pitched and pitched and pitched and it took years in order to get a salary raise it happened mm -hmm. after i left and i'm very happy to hear that it did end up happening now is it to the level that i want for my life their salary that what the salary was raised to no but that's okay because you know i i'm making choices that are in support of myself and what i want for my financial situation um, however, though, you know, but it, but it is true. It was just this crazy mindset and to push up against that mindset on a daily basis is exhausting. And so for me, it was a better choice to leave and go into an environment where I could enact change fast versus trying to change a system that's been in place for years and years and years and years, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Yeah, so I sit, um, I fall behind on this daily calendar that Dottie sent us all the time because I forget it's there. So then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, whoop. So this morning I looked over and I was like, oh, hey, I didn't pull any off since February 1st. Oops. <laughs> so I pulled them all off. But I think that was nothing happens a chance, right? Because the one from February 1st. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sent me that too. She said, "Look at the one I saw." You know, she was like excited because I gave some other friends those. Yeah, 
I mean, it's, but I think that's everything. And to tell your, you know, from what you asked, Dottie, like it's made a huge difference in my life because I can't remember if I've told you guys, but I uh, struggled with depression, had a very, 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 very depressed childhood. Uh, not that I knew it at the time, but like I look back on it mm -hmm. and I was very much glass, the glass is all empty. Like there's not even water in the glass. Like it just sucks. Um, everything happened to me. Mm -hmm. so frustrating to be me you know my parents didn't care because they'd had all these kids and you know everything like it was just like like that was how I lived and when I went to I kept telling myself you know what it's going to be better when I go to college and when you know destination addiction right yeah. so I go to college and I'm still depressed and I'm still frustrated and now it's worse because now I'm working three jobs to pay for the car pay for food and pay for my horse and i'm still not like making ends meet all the time like i'm constantly calling my parents up asking them to help cover stuff because you know i had to eat and so there wouldn't be any money left to pay bills so it was just it was such a challenge and then in 2010 i met my now husband um at that time he was just we were just online and we started chatting and chatting more and more. And every time I would say something, like, he is so far, like his glass is so full. It's unbelievable. People look at him and they're like, you know, it's not possible to be that happy all the time. And he's like, I just don't need to be upset about stuff. Like stuff happens. Oh, well, um, you know, like the way I was raised. So uh, my sister accidentally backed his, his van out of the driveway and hit a garbage can. And of course, you know, a nice long white scratch and, she comes in and she's freaking out because the way we were raised, like that was, that was, that was like, you are just going to go sit in your room and you're going to get chewed out. And and so she comes in, she's like, Oh my God, Matt, I'm so sorry. He's like, it's just a van. It's not that big a deal. He was like, I learned a long time ago that that's the type of stuff that doesn't matter. And just the way his mindset, like spending time around him, that was a big reason I know friend power works because just spending time around him again, and again and again, really, really just shifted how I looked at the world. Because I'd come in and I'd be like, oh, my God, and this sucks and that sucks. And he'd be like, so why does that matter again? <laughs> what, what kind of impact is that having on your future life? Your, your teacher gave you like four extra homework assignments. And I get it. That's frustrating that they're all due on Wednesday. But you're almost graduated and you're really not going to remember this. So why are you letting it get you down right now? And it just started helping me change going from, uh, you know, caught in the moment so bad to realizing, you know what? The moment has very little impact on my future. I'm, the moment only has the impact on my future that I give it. And so if I give it positive meaning, then it doesn't really matter. So that was my thought was just going from this very depressed, frustrated place to you know, owning and running my own company that has is an international, you know, we have clients overseas. It's not like this is just a me sitting alone in my little office here. Um, and just to think of where I've come from to, to get here, it's all been the choices that I've made. It's all been the choices. So that's amazing. Both of you, you and Jen and, and Cheryl all are, you know, you just epitomize what it means to, put your choices in and have those show up in your life and shift things in terms of, you know, uh, I know both Jen, you and Stephanie both were talking about mindsets that were keeping you down because they were stuck. They were set and you had to have a, a real shift, you know, in, in who you are and how you show up in life in order to apply what we're talking about. So it's really profound. I think anybody watching can say, wow, it doesn't matter what age any of us are, we have these opportunities, you know, to step into a, a greater sense of who I am or not. And there's really nobody else responsible for it except me. You know, it doesn't mean that um, we do, it, don't mistake it for we do everything by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all of us get support in so many ways, just like we're supporting one another and we're here to support other people. However, at the end of the day, I've still got to make a decision about how I want to be internally, how I want to show up in the world. Don't want to be bitching and moaning and carrying on all the time about ain't it awful. Um, or 
you know, I want to look at everything that happens to me and go, hey, how can I reframe this? How can I re, uh, you know, how can I shift what's going on right now? How can I shift energy? Because at the end of the day, everything is energy. I don't care if I go out here and stand on my solid porch. That solid porch is really an illusion. That's a that's a deep, that's a deep that's a deeper. Um, you know, it's an energy that comes to create something that is solid in the world as we know it. But it's all energy, and we yeah, have the yeah. chance to shift it, move it around, make it work for us or not. So, other examples, Cheryl. You know, I know you have some great things that have happened and, and how you've been able to apply this. And thank you, Steph. Yeah. Me and Jen. Yeah. Great, great to be yeah, mine's definitely too. I think along the finance, financial in terms of really working through that and realizing, cause I, you know, um, I mean, I have so many and we all do, right. We have so many talents and gifts and, and just realizing how valuable those are. I think sometimes is, is where I had to step into uh, really owning those things. And uh, so, so for me, that was kind of a, um, a turning point. But I think the other thing for me um, that was really just been so profound is and how I sort of look at everything now is that, you know, um, I'm not even sure how you explain my childhood. I wouldn't say I was depressed. It was chaotic. It was crazy. It was nothing about it was normal. And then, you know, and I said, it's not like it was the Brady Bunch, although I think Jan was pretty messed up too. So I guess not everybody in the Brady Bunch was perfect either, but um you know, but I mean, it just, it, we look at that. And I think for me, I actually, it's funny, I, and I won't say names, but I have this friend of mine and she grew up in like what, what you would co probably call the perfect childhood, right? Parents never fought. They never had any financial issues. Everything was always, you know, like puppy dogs and horses. And, you know, I mean, it was like the perfect childhood. She's, she's a little bit older now and she's in a marriage and they're having issues and she has absolutely no coping skills whatsoever to be able to deal with it. And so I think a long time ago, I realized that, you know, if, if you sort of grow up in a, in a bubble, you don't really have, you know, that that depth of character to be able to pull it out of you when you need it then. And I feel like because of, you know, and I'm sure, Stephanie, you feel the same way, but that resiliency that you, that strength, that, that inner strength that you have that comes from having challenges in your life because life, you know, they protected her from something that wasn't really real because nobody has that perfect life, right? So I'm sort of thankful that my childhood was kind of, you know, crazy in a way, because it really has created the strength of who I am. Who I am. So, it serves me so well. And um, so I think if people can look back and say, no matter, I mean, some people have had, and everybody's different. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm not saying everybody's childhood should be looked at that way, maybe because I don't, I, you know, mine certainly wasn't the worst. I know it wasn't the best, but I know, you know, but what I learned from it is invaluable. And I know it's part of who I am and I know it's why I can um, handle so many things the way that I do. And I'm really um, happy about who I am and I like myself. And that took me a while to get there because I kept looking at, you know, some of the things. But when I learned to embrace that past and realize it was my strength, um, I really started to like who I was. And so I think for me, it's just been this continual journey um, and, it, and it, it absolutely plays in every aspect of your business. It, I mean, you can't you can't separate that out and say, OK, I'm you know, I'm not real. I'm not real great on my personal life, but I'm in, in business. I'm you know, I'm a rock star. It doesn't really work that way. usually, you know, Unless you just got this big unless there's no authentic thing going on there and people see you. But that's not real either. So I think um, it, it plays in every aspect of our lives. And and I'm sort of thankful for my crazy childhood, to be honest with you. So I um, and I think the more you can embrace that and realize the gifts that come from it, um, because that's the experience you learn that moves you forward in life. Yeah. And I, you know, I have to say, I, I completely agree. Like I, I gave you guys, I was, I did not have a terrible childhood just so everyone is really clear on that. Like my parents really were awesome. It was not, it was a lot of my mindset, the way I looked at things. And I think mm -hmm. you're right. I wouldn't change a thing. Like there's always that, like, you know, which pill would you take, go back in time and fix you, you know, start over or, you know, whatever. And I'm always like, I wouldn't change a thing, single thing, you know, even what I consider the biggest screw up that I've had in my entire life, which was the choice that I made to go to a super expensive four year school and not use my degree. My degree. Um, like I still wouldn't go back and change that either, even because it, it's made me who I am and I've learned and I've grown through it. And 
the fact that I went through that frustrating time, I think, has given me the ability to realize it is about choices. And so when people try and play the victim, it's not, sorry, I've got all the reasons in the world to be the victim too. And I've chosen not to do that. And I think you're right, Cheryl. I think it's my, the background, the childhood that has made a big difference. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. well, it's always interesting, you know, because um, I sort of came from the one that looks like the Brady Bunch, you know, um, but uh, you know, it, it was a thing where we were taught what to think, um, when to think, you know, that kind of thing. And I was a person screaming to think, <laughs> you know, and was asking all these questions. So, uh, I kind of, um, you know, when I came into the mix, it, it made everybody else uncomfortable because I was asking all these questions and things. And so, you know, but I, I got to see how profound it was, what my parents did and gave us, you know, I mean, uh, how hard they worked, um, trying to correct things that they had grown up with. And they were just simply trying to instill things. So even though I kind of came from a different sense of things and had to, you know, kind of work through that, like getting into therapy and going, if I came from the Brady Bunch, how come I feel this way? <laughs> you know, kind of come into an understanding and then an appreciation of probably who they are and, and what they gave me and provided for me in that way. And then realize, you know, hey, this is my own journey and I have to chart my own course. And those were some really profound things. So, you know, I think no matter which way we come from, I'm like you all, I can go, wow, this is the most tremendous era I've had. Um, no matter what's happened, you know, it's a, it's a person uh, who came out, you know, 30 years ago and uh, couldn't go home for like 25 years and things like that. And that's a profound thing to happen. I wouldn't change that for anything because uh, they showed me who I wasn't so I could go into who I am. It was a great mirror. And, you know, we've all grown in the process, them and me, and, and have a different relationship today. But it's just amazing, I think, for any of us how we can look at what's happened and what can I gain from this? How, how can I really apply this to my life in a positive way? And no matter what's happened, if we can do that, then it's a great skill, transferable skill to be an entrepreneur, you know, because entrepreneurship is about taking ownership of your life. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to create or not create? Who do you want to do it with? And all these things are invaluable. And I know, Jim, you go through that process a lot. Any, any feedback you've got um, more on that? I'd love to hear it. Um, sure. So I, I love what you said about the feedback process. I think that that's, that's, the, that's the main point, I think, of anything that I was talking about last week with the um, being solutions-focused, understanding that it's a process and that a huge component of that process that brings success is being open to feedback and the feedback loop. And uh, like I said last week, you know, love saying feedback is love, you know, and that it's uh, as hard as it can be sometimes to receive that feedback. Um, if we can keep an open mind um, to practicing non-self-judgment in the process um, and really take you know, take the lessons from it and, and you know, and then leave whatever is, is not actually in alignment because that happens sometimes too. But, you know, like the power of feedback, I think that, that that's something that that's where I've witnessed the organizations that I've worked in and worked with um, where I've seen them excel the most were the ones who really had a, a healthy feedback process. So, um, you know, I think a, a very clear example of that, which is very, it's, for me, it's the most tangible, um, is an event planning. You know, and if you have an annual event, um, how, how come the event gets, gets better every year? It's because of the feedback that they received from the year before and the years prior, right? So it's kind of like you, have, you finish an event and then the immediate next step is to send out those surveys to get feedback. Um, and then, you know, you go through and you're like, okay, what worked? And then like, what, how would this flow, you know, flow better next year? Or how could this be even stronger next year? And, and then you just see that you end up getting more and more people involved and it grows and grows and grows. And so what started out as, you know, maybe a uh, 25 person event in, you know, one small, um, you know, uh, hotel meeting room. Now, all of a sudden, you know, 
10 years later, they're filling up huge conference centers and it's, you know, at least like 5,000 people showing up in attendance. And how does that happen? It happens because they received feedback and they kept making the event better and better and better. So that's the power of the feedback and how we can cut new paths, as we were saying, tie it full circle back around, how we can continue to make new pathways um, to um, make something better and better. And that's great, Jim, because I think sometimes we look at things that are big and we know realistically that it didn't start that way, <laughs> but we forget that it started with a single action, a single step. And sometimes it's easy to do a couple of things, I think, compare ourselves against something when we're beginning. Okay, I'm not there yet, so neither were they. they if they're there, it's only because they started sooner than we did. Uh, it doesn't mean that we won't get there, you know. And to be able to just continue that one foot in front of the other with our, you know, end result in mind and running into the obstacles, pivot, like you say, Jen, taking a different course when something that we thought was going to work out doesn't work out. And that's the, the, to me, that's the key thing that separates somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur and somebody who actually embraces and becomes an entrepreneur. And once I was able to understand how that process worked, I can do it over and over and over again. And I'm going to tell you, I've won big in a lot of things and I've lost big in a lot of things. Every time I've lost, I always have in the back of my mind, I've done it before, I can do it again. Woohoo, let's go. You know, I mean, you know, I've gone from, whoa, having been involved with uh, a sociopath in business and lost a uh, quarter of a million dollars that, you know, the judge said they owe me. And it's like, you know, never will get that. I mean, it's been years. And, um, you know, going to the real estate bust or lost millions of dollars of real estate, you know? But even so, what I get out of that is, do I want to do real estate again? Yeah, but I don't, I want to do it in a different way. I don't want to be the landlord this time, you know? I mean, so I learned all these lessons that, you know, I'm just, you know, my personality is really too way too nice to be a landlord, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> Uh, if, you, if you want an easy street, you know, come rent one of my properties. But, you know, I'm not going to do that way anymore. But it doesn't mean, oh, I hate real estate. I'll never do that again, you know. No, I'll do it. I'll do it in a different way. But, you know, it just allows me to sort of time something happens and go, you know what? This one didn't turn out right. Um, but I, I know that things can turn out right again because I've done them before. I, I have this expectation that I can apply those same kind of principles. Um, so I think that's what a history gives a person that, you know, maybe when you're younger, you don't have as much history yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not that you don't have some specific great things that you've been able to apply it to, but in history can either uh, jade us, you know, honestly, or can make us really still believe. And I think, after you have a lot of history, to still believe in the possibility is a great skill. Because I think as we all grow older, that's what keeps a young mind is, is that kind of thing. And, and I've watched so many people become jaded by their experiences to the detriment of them, those people around them, their family. You know. um, so it always reminds me, I do have a choice and I've got to make it, you know, I've got to, I've got to make the best choice I can right now and maybe tomorrow I'll find that I needed to make another one, <laughs> you know, and I'll have to make that one. And they're challenging at times. It's, it's not that, that, that there, there's no opportunity uh, for, for learning something new. I find an opportunity every day, and I'm sure you all too. So what else do we have to kind of offer in uh, our article as we end up here? Last parting words. Um, I, mine would just be, you know, I, I recommend for everybody who's watching this to read it. Um, I think we'll, you know, we'll put the, um, I'll copy and paste the link in right now um, into the chat area. Um, and, you know, my writing words is like just the excitement that, you know, this, it's just, it's so helpful to have um, science to help explain 
our experience. You know, it, it, what I like about the article is that it helps make it tangible for us. Like these things that we can know through our intuition, which I believe, you know, majority, majority of us probably have known a lot of what's in here through our own intuition, but to then have it backed up by science, it, it just, it's so nice. It makes it tangible, which then makes it easier to implement. So I recommend to read it and just spend some time with it and, um, you know, and, and devise like your thoughts about it, you know, and, and bring clarity for yourself around, you know, now that you have the information, what do you want to do with it? Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I think if I were going to say the most important thing that, um, you know, as far as leaving some parting thought is to surround yourself with people that see your potential, who want to cheer you on, who, who are looking at what, what you, um, you know, who, not that they can't give honest feedback, but there's a way to give feedback that's in a loving way um, and um, who still have your best interest when they're giving it. And I think just make sure that you, you have those people in your life and if you don't, go find them. Because they, there are. I mean, you know, like us. Because yes, we trying to call us. Okay, and E three is calling. I'm trying to figure out why my Skype is going off with E three calling me. Anyway, uh, no, I don't know what happened there. But anyway, so I just, I think if you don't, you need to find them. And if you can't find them, come find us, and we'll help you find them, or you can join us. How's that? <laughs> Very good. Dan, how about you? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Dan. I think, um, you know, Cheryl put it really well. Your life is up to you. You know, life's what you make it. So let's make it great. I think that's a song. I don't think I can put that off the top of my head. Um, but you have complete control. You have complete control over your life, over your future, over your present. You can start making that decision. Um, check out the article. It'll help put things in perspective for you. If you need additional reading, I highly recommend Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, highly, highly recommend it. If you're really struggling with this whole my mind creates my reality thing, that is a great book to start with. Um, and if you need help, reach out to us. You know, we're we're here. You can get in touch with any of us at the uh, 247epicentrepreneurs.com. I think we all have links on there. So yeah. Um, reach out, get in touch with us. Let us know how we can help you. You know, we're doing this to help you. So give us the opportunity. Um, I look forward to hearing, I, I tell everyone I'm in this for the stories. I want to hear what y'all's stories are. Those of you who are listening to this. Yeah. And thanks for that, Stephanie, because I was going to remind everybody, to, you know, um, we have our Get Busy Lean, uh, our, our 30 day coaching challenge and our bonus week is right there for you. You know, some, Tremendous trainings that everybody has offered. I mean, I can't say enough about what all of these individuals have done to bring, I mean, bring their best to you. And, and you know, they coach people every day, entrepreneurs. They know what it takes for entrepreneurs themselves. And the fact that they're giving you this information to just use. Go to 247 Epic Entrepreneurs, like Stephanie said. And, and for some reason, uh, my chat thing is cut off down there. And so I've not been able to welcome people or so please welcome some of the people before we uh, close it off here and put in the 247epicentrepreneurs.com if somebody will put that in down there. And we appreciate you being here. And uh, thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Jen and Yasmin. We hope you get there real soon. And, and we'll look forward to this is our Monday motivation lab. So uh, great to be here with everybody and enjoy your day, okay? All right, you take it, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.